Hi, welcome to another episode of Atkins Diet Misconceptions. My name is, of course, Kent Altina, and in today's episode, I'm going to be dealing with another misconception that is often widely propagated out there by low-carb detractors, and it's the confusion over the terms ketosis and ketoacidosis. And you just got asked this question by one of my watchers of my videos that she had started the Atkins diet and one of her friends had said, you know you get too much ketones in your blood and you go into a coma and then you die. And again, what does this all come down to? It's this confusion over between the difference between ketosis, which is a process of burning fat for fuel, also called the polysis, and ketoacidosis, which is a disease or a medical condition that only affects type 1 diabetes. And again, let's understand what the two terms are. Ketosis is the process of the body burning ketones for fuel and releasing, and because the body cannot consume the entire fatty acids for fuel, it has these byproducts called ketones and they float throughout the body for and get it secreted through the urine and that's how you're able to test for them um, using ketone strips. Ketoacidosis, like I said, is a specific medical condition that only affects type 1 diabetes who, when they're hyperglycemic, which means when they're very high in their blood sugar levels and their bodies cannot produce enough insulin or any insulin, their body starts producing, instead of using all that high sugar that's within the blood, it starts burning fat for fuel and burns ketones. So obviously you can see the two differences there. One, you're the low carber who doesn't is not eating any sugar and his blood sugar level should be really low is burning fat for fuel and their boy thereby has ketones. And the other one whose blood sugar is really high, eat, consuming a lot of sugar and is still burning fat for fuel. But there's some people out there who don't agree with that. Who say it's all just a matter of a scale, you know, at ninety seven point three you're normal. At 100, you're in ketosis, and at 105, you're in ketoacidosis. It's just a, it's just like temperature. It just goes up. You might have a mild fever, and you might have a heavy fever. Well, it's not quite like that. The only people who can ever get ketoacidosis are people who cannot produce enough insulin to handle their blood sugar intake, which are type 1 diabetes. It's not just a graduation along the scale, a little bit of ketones, and then a lot of ketones. No, and it's not just a degree, uh, matter of degrees. Normal dietary state of number of ketones in the blood is 0.1 millimeters per, per liter of blood. An overnight fast might lead a normal person into a 0.3 um, mmol per liter. In a ketogenic diet, you're typically between 1 and 3 per day and a 21 day fast in which you're not eating anything at all might put you in the 10 mmol per liters however uncontrolled diabetes now granted remember I said 1, 1 to 3 would be normal for a ketogenic diet the uncontrolled diabetes is more than 25 mmol per liter so you can see it's not simply a matter of a few degrees higher. It's at least almost 10, 10 times the amount of ketones in the blood that you might see on an Atkins diet patient. So it's a dramatic increase. It's not just a little bit, it's not just a few degrees higher. It's obviously significant. Well, there, there's also some who say that any ketosis is bad. And that thereby, they're also ignoring the fact that a normal human being, like I said, going to the, um, starts producing ketones in the middle of the night. Your body burns fat for fuel on a, even a normal high carb person during nighttime activities. Whenever you're not eating for from four to six hours, your body's going to start um, consuming whatever it can for fuel. And all that sugar that you just recently ate is not in the blood anymore. It's either been stored as glycogen by the liver and into the muscles or it's going to start consuming fat. Well, even during the middle of the night, most people are eating 
or consuming their fat for fuel and start burning ketosis. It's a very natural body's reaction to this to one, how to um, survive long periods of time without um, fruits and berries. It's, it's a very evolved process. Many hunter and gatherers would typically go into ketosis for many months out of the year as there simply weren't the grain stores around or fruits or vegetables growing in the winter tundra like it is in Iowa right now. So, like I said, ketosis is a very natural piece of the body. The also the confusion comes in is that, you know, when the hyperglycemic patient starts filling the ketoacidosis, they have a very fruity flavor to their breath and somewhat the similar thing happens within ketosis. So there's some some of the side effects are similar. You know, the headaches, the um, unusual breath order, unusual um, body odor can happen. Uh, in both ketosis and ketoacidosis. However, there is no such stage of ketosis that will lead you into a coma. So, in contrary to what that person's friends and family were trying to propagate to him, there is definitely the misconception that if you stay on Atkins or if you're doing a low-carb diet in general, you're going to lead yourself in ketoacidosis. You simply can't do it. One involves a person eating very few carbohydrates and one involves a person eating lots of carbohydrates. So that concludes another episode of Atkins Diet Low Carb. I hope this was beneficial for you and make sure you show up on Thursday nights to the Ustream TV show. We've had lots of good um, comments and questions during that time and I hope you watch. Thanks for watching. Bye.